This is so terrible, man. Can't believe it. All right. What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. I am... I'm beyond disappointed. CD Project Red, Cyberpunk, 2077. It's time. It's time. We're gonna get into it. So, there was an article by Jason Schreier, who works for Bloomberg, where he did a deep dive on CD Projekt Red. What went wrong? He interviewed 20 current and former CD Projekt staff, most of whom reported they wanted to be made anonymous, yeah, so they could keep their jobs. This is what they said about the company. They depict a development process marred by unchecked ambition, poor planning and technical shortcomings. Employees described the company that focused on marketing at the expense of development, an unrealistic timeline that pressured some into working extensively overtime long before the final push, aka crunch. I can't believe it. Like these guys, yeah? Don't you realise, I mean, you're, you're human beings. The management are human beings. Don't you realise if you push your staff to breaking point, yeah, that they're going to get burnt out. And if you get burnt out, it doesn't matter how godlike the ta talented the staff are. Once you're burnt out, you are done. You're done. And that is what's led to this shoddy embarrassment of just an abomination that is cyberpunk. I mean, cyberpunk, the game is, is, is all right. As a game, it's all right, it's decent, it's okay, yeah. When, if you can look past all the glitches and the bugs and just the, the game-breaking aspects of the game, and there's a lot of things that just break the game, yeah. I mean, look, when I played the game, I'd be having a good time or an all right time doing like a mission that kind of like grabs my attention and all of a sudden I try to shoot and my gun won't well, shoot. I can't even actively get my gun out. And I go into my menu, check my menu, menu says action blocked. I can't even use my weapons because the action won't allow me to pull out my weapon and use it. I'm like, what is this? Or I'll be going through the game, I'll try on an outfit or something like that, and all of a sudden I'll be locked out of changing my equipment. Or I'll get stuck, I'm doing a mission, I'm going through a, um, a room or an alleyway and I fall through the floor. And I can't go, I can't go anywhere. Or I'm in, in the car, I'm driving the car, and then I just see like a wall, yeah? Like a giant black wall. And I'm like... What is this? There's a road here. What's this? So I just keep going forward and I go through the black and um, the basically black wall and it's just you go through the other side and it was literally just like a loading screen or something. And then I turn around and I look and I see the black wall. And I back up, go through the black wall, and it's still the next area. So I don't even understand what kind of programming that is or how they chopped it up or whatever that is. You know, it's just like stuff like that is so immersion breaking. Or I'll be walking down the street, yeah, and then I'm walking past like a couple people that haven't even loaded in yet, yeah, which completely throws me off. Then I'll see like five people walking, yeah, and they all look the same. They all dress the same, the same hair. There's basically the same model repeated five times. And I just look at and I think to myself, what is this man? Like, what is it? And it just makes me not want to play the game. Like, it makes me not want to play the game. Although what I will say is the game does crash less now, but it still does crash. Yeah. It's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing. You know, the fact that their stock has dropped by over 30%. Yeah. 
That's ridiculous. You don't sell. When they say 30 million to a company that is worth over a billion dollars, yeah, that is at least 300 million gone from your shares because you rushed the game out. But we've got to get to that. You know, let's not rush. Let's not rush. Let's take our time. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what else happened? Um, cause I, I'm, I've taken bullet points of the interview from Jason Schreier's, um, deep dive in CD Projekt Red that he did on Bloomberg. Yeah. So, uh, early reviews. Yeah. We're only given PC codes. Yeah, reviewers were only given PC codes, not a console one in sight because they knew. They knew. There is no way that they can say on our side we couldn't see. Do you not have a QA department? Do you not have testers? Even if you say the whole thing going on with the C virus, so people had to play it remotely, the game has gone gold. There's no way you can get like a a disc version out to one of your testers or when one of the devs to just put the PlayStation version into a PlayStation and just see what happens. Because I promise you, if you had got a PlayStation 4 and put one of the discs inside of it and played it, within three minutes, you would have seen this is unacceptable. There's no way we can release this game. No way we can. Yeah, literally it will take three minutes, if even three minutes, to see that it's an absolute, it's just a trash fire, a dumpster fire. Yeah, we can't do this. We, we will completely ruin our reputation if we release this game in this state on the PS4. Completely destroy ourselves. All the hard work that we've done to amass the, the love, you know, a dedication and loyalty from these fans... You know, that put us on a pedestal for what we did with Witcher 2 and Witcher 3. We will completely throw all that away if we show them this game. It's already late now. Regarding what you showed us at E3 2018. And what you've been showing us in Night City Wire. Right? Wasted now. But anyway, let's push forward. And the, and, and the thing is, I don't want to hear nothing where people say it's a PC version. I don't want to hear that. That winds me up. That winds me up to no end. That's the reason that that apology video, because um, I don't know, I, the, um, one of the the co-founders of the CD Projekt Red, he did like an apology video just like a day ago or two days ago. Yeah. All I heard in that, that apology video was, we're making the game. The PS PC version has had great reviews. People like it. We kind of didn't take too much note of the console version. We're sorry. But people on the PC like their version. We're going to do better. I want to swear. Don't wind me up, bro. Don't wind me up. That that pisses me off, yeah? This game is not a PC game. You released this game in this... The reason you rushed this game out in the first place was because you wanted to get the game out in time for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which are peak console, yeah? So don't wind me up trying to tell me that, oh, we're, we're dedicated for the PC. We only focus on the PC version. Shut the fuck up with that shit. That shit winds me up and pisses me off. If it was so much of a PC game, tell me from the beginning, I won't get it on the console. I won't even worry about your game because there's hundreds of games that I've seen on the PC. Yeah, sorry, I need to calm down. There's a lot of games that I've seen on the PC that are godlike, but it's a PC game, right? And I don't think my computer could run those games in the quality I'd like to play them in, so I don't mess with them. It's PC, it's, that, it's in that domain, no problem. It's the same thing like a Switch. You see games that are out on the Switch, yeah? That game looks amazing, but you don't have a Switch. So what do you do? Nothing. You don't pay attention to a game that you can't get because you don't have the machine or machine powerful enough to play it. If from the beginning they said, we have made this game and it's more of a PC game than anything, I would say, all right, no problem. CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk is not for me. I'm going to continue playing 
Persona and my Spider-Man Miles Morales. So I don't want to hear nothing. When the whole reason they screwed up this whole game was because they were trying to capitalise on the release of the new consoles. And they've completely sacrificed their reputation and this game in the process because they lied from pillar to post. Don't want to hear that. At all. At all. No one could come to me with that argument saying that it was for the PC. Because they came to... What, what trade shows, shows were they coming to? They were coming to gaming console trade shows like E3 and Gamescom. That's what they came to. When um, Keanu Reeves came on the um, the uh, Xbox showcase, yeah, and he just said, like, he's like, um, you're breathtaking. No, you're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. That was at a Xbox console gaming showcase, not a PC gaming show, uh, PC uh, gaming showcase where they were showing off like new graphics cards for Nvidia or anything like that. It was for a console gaming showcase that they showed all this stuff at yeah so don't wind me up with that talk about pc and that's all they've got to say and they don't even own up to the way they've been um on to, um to their marketing focusing on marketing than the actual game that the e3 demo the 2018 demo was fake oh i can't believe it that's sickening to me you just had anthem just the other day yeah, a couple, just like, you know, a couple years ago, yeah? I think it was like 2018, 2019, might have even been the same year, yeah? As this um, demo for CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077, when it completely showed a fake trailer and the game did not live up to its expectation at all. You're in the future, two years or three years into the future from that... You should learn your lesson and say, we can't do that. We company cannot afford that. We are an independent company. We make one game every five, six or seven years. Yeah, we cannot afford to botch like that. If we do, we're done. We're done, bro. And then what do you do? You lie, you manipulate, absolute power corrupts absolutely. They became too, too powerful. They became too powerful, too much money, greed. It, that, that's... The story of the CD, of, uh, CD Project Red. What it looks like to me. Power. Money. Greed. It just overtook them. Overtook them. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. That's what I see with CD Project Red. From what they were. From Witcher 3 days. To this. It's not even the same company. Just complete lies and deception. The game sold 30 million units. Game could have sold 30 million. Easy. Put the game off. Tell us the truth. You've earned the respect of us. And we believe in you. That if you had said we have to delay this game for another two years. We are so sorry. Yeah. But we want to make the absolute best game possible. This is the way the game is. We have created a new system where we stream. We're literally streaming the game, yeah, as the game is playing. It's a brand new system that we have just created. The success of Witcher 3 has elevated our company to such an astronomical level that it is a little bit overwhelming, yeah. So we are still adjusting to that change, even though we know... It has been over seven years, yeah? Just the growth and our ambition, we're still trying to adapt to it. Can you give us a chance? Now, I'll say for me personally, I would have been pissed for the best part of like six seconds. And then I'd be like, you know what, yeah? You gave us Witcher 3. There's still plenty of other games that I can be playing. Oh, man. Pissed. Well, it is what it is. If you're going to de de deliver what I know you can deliver from what you did from Witcher 3, I look at that as a reference point. Fine. Fine. That's all you would have to do. Come clean. They didn't. They lied. Over and over again. 
from 2018 where the game was a fake demo, bro. PlayStation 4 removed it from their um, from the store, their online store. That's how bad the game is. That's how much acknowledgement of how absolute garbage the game is that PlayStation even removed it from the store, man. I've never seen that in my life before. I've never seen, well, I've never seen a game such an absolute dumpster fire of a gaming release in my life. It was so bad that PlayStation removed it from their store and then they, and then they offered refunds, full refunds for that game. It's madness. It's madness. Let's see another quote. CD Projekt Red stretched things too far. Uh, they tried to develop an engine. Yeah, they tried to develop an engine uh, behind uh, CD Projekt Red. Uh, it was brand new, yeah, which simultaneously with the game slowed down production. I mean, why would you create a brand new system along with the game, untest it, just Put it in the game as you're making a brand new game with a lot of new things. Driving, shooting, first person, you know, a lot of mathematical equations in terms of like, you know, guns and damage and elemental properties and the slowdown and all this type of stuff, right? And data that is coming up. When you're scanning objects, so scanning enemies and just things around the area. And you're using a brand new system that kind of like streams in content as well as the game is playing. I want to say it, but there's a quote that a developer says that will say it way better than I could say it, yeah? Essentially, the developer says it's like, where was it? They compared the process of the new system to trying to drive a train while the tracks are being laid in front of you at the same time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's so unprofessional. It's shocking. And this is a, is a billion dollar company. A billion euro company. Billion pound company, whatever. Unreal, man. Let's get it. So this is a former audio programmer that worked for CD Projekt Red at the time. Yeah. Said to one of his colleagues that he asked for a meeting. Yeah. Uh, to talk with the management to see how the company thought it was going to be able to pull off such a technically challenging project at the same time frame as The Witcher. And their management answered the audio programmer by saying, we'll figure it out. <sighs> Unrealistic. Unrealistic. Unchecked ambition springs to mind so what else did they say yes so here's, here's an interesting one that I pulled from the interview studio head Alan Badowski who took over as director demanded overhauls for Cyber Project Red's gameplay and story for the next year everything was changed including fundamental elements like gameplay perspectives yeah which makes sense. The game went from third person to first person. That's why at the E3 2018 trailer, the cutscenes were in third person perspective. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, not to mention that that whole demo was fake. That just, just that really winds me up. The fact that that, that was fake. All of it. It's sheer madness. Have you not learnt from seeing what happened to Bioware with Anthem, Mass Effect Andromeda? Have you not seen it? 
You had a lesson to learn from looking at Marvel Avengers. You had, there were so many lessons to learn. Right. A top staffer who worked on Witcher 3 had strong opinions on how Cyberpunk should be made. Which clashed with Badowski and led to the eventual departure of several developers. Now, when several developers clash with management, Adam Badowski, yeah, which leads to them leaving over story changes and gameplay changes, which is obviously the perspective, yeah. Going from third person, which is what I really did like about um, the whole Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That's why I wasn't on board at first with this whole this game. The only thing that turned me round was Night City Wire, the way they presented the game and showed the aspects of the game and the hype and the music and the cutscenes, the way the gameplay looked. It kind of swayed me and turned me round, and I was like, you know what? I do like CD Projekt Red. I want to support these guys. And this game does look alright. And I have learned that the perspective of a game doesn't generally overwhelm how I feel about a game. Because I don't like first person games, but I play Halo. I like Halo. And I play Borderlands. I love Borderlands. So, and I did like Killzone. So I'd learnt in certain unique situations a game can be so good or I can like a game so much that I can overcome the genre that I normally don't like because I enjoyed the game. I took that risk on this game. Yeah. Didn't really pay off. So that tells me a lot. Yeah. So 2016, when Adam Badowski took over, that's when the game stopped being... Uh, Third person became first, uh, first person. Oh, so bad, dude. So bad. And here's another part of the interview where it says, Much of CD Projekt's red focus, according to several people who worked on Cyberpunk 2077, was on impressing the outside world. And that's when they talked about slice of gameplay showcase at E3. Uh, the industry's main trade event at the time, yeah, see, um, E3 is now dead in the water, flushed down the toilet, yeah. In 2018, it showed, you know, the main character embarking um, like a mad mission, yeah, of the crime-ridden CD Night City. Demo was fake. I'm so shocked about that. That's, I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted, mate. That demo was fake. What is happening? What is what is happening, mate? CD Project Red of all companies in the world, they fake a trailer. And what's worse, they fake the trailer with elements that hadn't even been programmed in 2018. Like I give an example, the flathead robot wasn't even programmed or coded yet. Yet they talked about the flathead robot like it was a part of the game. Like it was like a companion that you could have and you would do in missions. Mate. And if you've played Watch Dogs, having like your own little drone, kind of like a spider-like thing, you know... Those things are like hella cool, man. So I was like really excited and cool to see what this flathead robot could do. Not even in the game. You can use the flathead robot in one of the main missions, but it's only kind of like in cutscenes. Like you, you, you're on a camera, and then you're directing the in a heavily controlled, yeah, scripted scenario where the flathead robot can go. So it's not part of the game. It's not something you can equip. Like it showed in the E3 demo. It's nothing. It wasn't even coded in that E3 demo. Because it was fake. Same thing like the car chase. I think something happened. Where you saved somebody. You saved somebody. 
yeah? And that person had some kind of insurance policy with trauma team, yeah? And then you were going about your business. And then you got ambushed by some mad um, gang that you've pissed off from before. And there was like a mad car chase where Jackie took over and he was driving. And then you were shooting and stuff like that. And saying those are just parts of the game where you may interact with a gang and, you know, a mission doesn't go so well. It affects your reputation. And then they're after you. So sometimes when you're driving, you might get car chases and ambushes where Jackie's driving or someone's driving or whatever. And then you're shooting it out with them. It looked pretty cool. Non-existent. Non-existent. The only time you see that in the game is at the beginning of the game in a store in a st basically story scripted something like that unbelievable unbelievable all right what else is there in this yes yeah, so here's the bit that I was talking about um the demo was entirely fake see the project red hadn't yet finalized and coded underlying gameplay systems. Which is why so many features were missing. Like the contextual kills. Yeah? Where they killed people using the environments. The trauma team feature. I swear I heard something where they said you can have an insurance policy. Yeah? Or something like that. With trauma team. So if you get injured or something like that. Trauma team will come in and help you and take you away. Yeah, if you have like a payment plan with them. Yeah, because that there was a mission in the E3 um, 2018 trailer where the girl had a trauma team membership, premium membership. And that's why the trauma team came and took her away and saved her. Yeah. All the kind of stuff with like flying cars and the car chase and ambush stuff. And the reason certain story elements felt sped up. Yeah, like in the beginning bit, yeah. Which, like, the finish, one thing I'll say, yeah, is like there was a part in the game where you could choose whether to be Nomad, Corpo, or Street Kid. And then you go through that story, yeah. And then afterwards, this weird thing happens where it goes to like a montage of you dancing with Jackie, meeting Jackie's mom, starting to live the life, meeting the um, certain fixes in the city and the people and dancing and drinking and um, just becoming like V that has just, that is like a mercenary and whichever. And it was a lot of cut, 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 sped up bits, yeah? That did throw me off. Like I felt when I was playing the game, yeah? Once I could actually get to that bit, because it took a long time to get there because there was so much glitches and crashes and stuttering, juddery frame rates and stuff like that, yeah? That bit felt very disjointed, yeah? I kind of felt like a, a separation from the story when it did that, yeah? And it does do that at certain aspects of the game. Like you'll be doing a mission and then it will just like show you something. Go a little bit of a cutscene and it will like speed up and then you're in the next area. Yeah. Stuff like that. Where the story is like sped up. It's been cut. It's been cut mate. And not, not the fact that it was just cut. It just was never there in the first place. Because they wanted to... They wanted to cut development in certain areas where they didn't think it needed to be. They could just pull it as technological um, what, what is it they put? CD crime ridden technological night city digital stuff. Right? The option select. Come on man. The flathead robot. Not even there. Gone. Removed. Oh no 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 sorry. Not gone removed. Wasn't even coded yet. Never coded. Never even made it to code. Unreal, dude. Unreal. You know, even aspect with like the police in that game, yeah? And security companies. Like, there's a lot of times, yeah, that I'll be playing the game, yeah? And then I will see like a hold up happening. And I think to myself, you know what, yeah? Let me save them people there. Let me save them. Let me save them. I pull up. Start shooting up the bad guys. 
that all of a sudden, because it's in like um, a public area, the police turn up. But the thing is, the police turn up. Like literally, one second, there's nobody there. The next second, they literally appear behind you. There's missions where I'll be doing a mission, like a stealth mission, yeah? I've stealthed out everybody, you know? Unbelievable. So sick, so smooth, so clean. And I get into a room or an area that is locked off. And I lock off the area. Like, I would literally, like, lock the, the doors so the code, yeah, is locked off. Boom, locked. Boom, locked. Yeah? Then I'm moving and I pick up an item... And then I look up, and then there's like a soldier there, or a police officer, or an it, or one of the private military companies, like Militech person there. How the hell did you get in here? Literally, they just load in right next to you, or right behind you, or right in front of you, where there's no way they could have got in there. There's times where I'm getting shot up, and I don't even know where I'm getting shot up from because I'm in cover. Or I've gone round the corner and I'm still getting shot up. Well, that's, a, to be honest with you, that's a problem that I had from the beginning of the game. Yeah. And I admit, at first, I thought maybe it's like one of those viruses that get planted into you. Because there's this thing where they can, um, they can hack you. Yeah. And you can get put with some thing that's called overheat. Yeah. Or um, overload or stuff like that. Yeah. It's not that, literally, I'm getting shot up. I'm literally getting shot up. Like, I look at every single scenario where that happens and nobody's around me. I haven't been hacked. Nothing. I'm just taking damage. Shot up from everywhere. Or there's times where basically an enemy will just pop up where I'm hiding. Behind me conveniently, on the side of me, someone just pops in. Come on, man. Come on, bro. And then it finds out that the reason that, like, the whole feature with the police and these Militech and everyone just, that certain situation where they will just pop in, is because it was implemented last second. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about that. Whatever, man. So... <clears throat> What else is there? Uh, the overtime didn't make development of the game any faster. At 2000 and, um, 2019, E3, CD Projekt Red announced the game would come out April uh, 2020. Fans were elated, but internally, some members of the team could only scratch their heads. Only wondering how they could possibly finish the game by then. One person said they thought the date was a joke uh, based on the team's project that they expected the game to be ready in 2022. Yeah. yeah. That's the reason. So even here, it says the developers said that the game will be ready in 2022. That's the reason in my first video where I talked about this and I say CM Punk 2077 is a trash fire, I said the only time that they're going to get this game ready is within two years. Yeah. You know, which ba which I basically mean in 2022. That's when I think that this game will be finished. It, something resembling finished will be what this game will be in 2022. And even the developers thought that as well. Go check my video that I released on Boxing Day. Where I said, this game, I think that this game will be finished 2022. Two years. Two years from that time that's what i think and then they put and they still like in the apology video they still put out dates they put out a roadmap for their patches and for their dlc you've not learned yet you've not learned yet why are you putting dates don't put dates you can't promise anything shut up put your head down and do the work do the work man stop promising dates man don't put dates on stuff that's how you get called out. And all this BS happens. Unbelievable, man. To the fact that the staff are finding out at E3. Staff, your own employees, are finding out 
when the release date of the game is and they're scratching their heads like, hey, what? April 2020? Yeah, uh, that's a joke. Unbelievable. Yeah, all right. So, what else? It says, cancelling features and scaling down the size of Cyberpunk Metropolis helped. Well, that's lovely to hear. Which, to be honest with you, they did say something like that. Yeah. They did say that they're going to make a Cyberpunk smaller than Witcher 3. Which is an option select. And then there was like a interview that they did with one of the developers. Where, what did he say? They said that they found through research that something like 70% of people did not play Witcher 3 all the way through to the end. And so they want to make this game more optimised so a lot of stuff is in side missions. Liars! Liars! They cut stuff out. You cut features and you scale down the size of Cyber Project Red because you wanted to make it easier on yourselves. You didn't want to f f um, commit to the commitments that you promised this game was going to be. Nor could you do it either. Nor could you accomplish it. It was beyond your talent to do it. Just say so. Instead of saying, oh, we're going to make it smaller. That, I really hate that stuff, man. Like, really winds me up. Don't say stuff like that. We're going to make the game smaller. I hate that kind of talk. I hate it. Oh, man. Um, I didn't know it was in uh, So, even here, it says, um, there were times uh, when people would crunch for 30 hours a day. Uh, and it was like a, what, a little bit over that was uh, my record probably. I would do five days. Basically saying that some people lost their um, their, red, their weddings, their marriages got ruined. Relationships ruined, you know, because they were overworking sometimes and burnt out and stressed out and unhappy. You know, um, when they were making... Um, see the project where we're making promises not to do crunch so much or force people to work like five, um, 13 hours a day five days a week or sometimes six days a week you know asking people to do overtime yeah when people ask for time off their city project red management will say to them okay you can but someone else is going to have to do your hours for you so whatever you're not doing it's going to go on somebody else you sure you still want to do that Tyrants, man. Tyrants. They're no better than EA, Activision, or any of these people. They're worse, actually. They're worse. They prove they're worse because of the lies and the deception and then the shoddy condition in which the game was released. Facts. Big facts. All right. What else have we got? Yeah. Cancelling and scaling down the size of Cyberpunk. Metropolis helped. But the team's growth was hampered. Um, some departments, yeah, developers said, while Witcher 3 was created by roughly 240 people in-house, according to companies, our punch punch credits show the game had over 500 internal developers. But because CD Projekt Red wasn't accustomed to the size, people who worked on the game said their teams were often um, siloed and unorganised. I mean... This company has been around for over 10 years, yeah? So they should know a thing or two about management. So that's one thing that comes to mind, yeah? And the success you've had with Witcher has been for over seven years, yeah? Or six years, six or seven years. So you cannot hire somebody that is a manager that can manage this stuff. Your company's worth over a, a billion dollars. You cannot afford to get somebody or hire some people or do some type of training in terms of management. Nobody can do that in the whole billion dollar company. 
no management no one to manage certain um departments to make sure that work is not overlapping that certain aspects of the game are being fulfilled so that you know you work on th this area of um japan town you work on this area of um night city yeah um you work on programming for certain cars you work on certain um aspects of the game regarding the skill tree and it makes sure you don't have two people or three people working on the technical skill tree or how certain things will work with it just make sure that it's, there's some type of organization in a billion dollar company no no nothing like that okay the level of unprofessionalism is just mind-boggling mind-boggling yeah Management said delaying wasn't an option. Of course it wasn't. You wanted to get the game out to capitalise on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So that's the reason I don't want to hear none of that shit. That utter bollocks. Oh, the game was a PC game. We are so focused on the PC version that we forgot. And, you know, we kind of... Abandoned the console version a little bit, which we're very sorry about. You have made most of your money from the console version. Don't wind me up. Don't wind me up, bro. Don't wind me up. Don't wind me up, man. Make me feel like I'm lesser because I bought the PS4 version or because I bought the console version, trying to make me feel like I'm lesser. Oh, you should just got the PC version. Fuck off, man. Fuck off. Don't wind me up, dude. Don't want see that kind of like annoys me, man. Sorry, man. So I'm getting annoyed, bro. But that stuff really, really fucks me off, dude. Really fucks me off. It just makes me feel like uh, trying to say like, oh, we're we're the PC master race. We only made it for the PC master race, people. You guys are just console people. You know, we don't really care about you guys. You've honed your whole marketing campaign at us. You've marketed your whole campaign um, on. Console gaming. That's the reason you rush the game out for the PS5, the Xbox Series X, the PS4, and the Xbox One. Don't fuck about, man. Don't fuck about with your stupid apology video. Say, oh, the PC version is good. People love it on the PC. Console version, we're sorry about that. We did kind of neglect it about, but we focused primarily on the PC version. Fuck off, dude. Fuck off CD Project Red with that shit. Yeah. Alright, so let's move on from that, yeah. <coughs> Their goal was to release some from 2077 before new consoles from Microsoft and Sony expecting the fall of 2020. That way the company could launch the game on existing PS4 um and Xbox One and PC, then double dip by releasing versions down the road. For the next console uh, generations. Greed dude. Just greed over quality man. And optimization. That's it man. I hope it was worth it bro. I hope it's worth it. I hope it's worth it. Some engineers realised that Cyberpunk was too complex a game. To run well on a 7 year old console. With its city full of bustling, hulking buildings. Um, they said, but they said management dismissed their concerns, however, citing their success of Witcher 3. Now, me, not being a programmer, thought the same thing. The reason I believe Cyberpunk could be done is literally because of games like Witcher 3, which they've already done. And I've seen futuristic games with high sky rises and technology. Look at Final Fantasy VII. Look at Borderlands. You know, well, let's not use Borderlands as an example because that's literally nothing. Yeah. You got games like Final Fantasy. You got games like Resident Evil. You got games like uh, Persona. You know, there's tons of games, Spider Man, that have done like. In the future, with technology and gadgets and combat and lots of different mini games and dynamics in the game and moving parts, it's been done before. So, I've got no reason to believe that these guys can't do it. 
Because I value CD Projekt Red higher than some of these other companies. So if I value their skill and their know-how more than other companies, of course they could do it. And that E3 trailer that you showed me in 2018, yeah, that was that was basically what you're aiming for on the PS4. Obviously, yeah, because there was no mention of the PS5 or the Xbox Series X back, uh, the X back then. And that's what you've been building for. So if that's what you're looking at for the PS4, I've got no reason to doubt that you can do it. I've got no reason to doubt it. You know, sorry, another game I forgot to mention, Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 2 had like a lot of, was, you know, lots of gizmos and gadgets and different types of gameplay and infiltration of third person and cutscenes and stuff like that. So why should I doubt that CD Projekt Red? Why should I doubt that? Come on, dude. Sort it out, man. Sort it out, bro. And so this is what, and then they say, without access to offices, console development kits, most developers would play builds on their home computers. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear it. If you can press the game, you can get a version of the thing. Oh, do you know what I mean? None of those people got PS4s. None of them. None of your developers. None of you. You have a QA department that would have specific PS4s that you can download the PS4 version on a server. That none of that is possible when a billion dollar company, where you have testers at home with a PS4 or a dev kit PS4, where they can upload it from an internal server, yeah, to the console. Or send them one via post or something where they could test it out. So I assure you, within three to four minutes, you would have discovered this abomination cannot be put in the hands of consumers. There's no way we I wouldn't we could never charge anybody even four pounds for this garbage. For this piece of shit. There's no way we could even charge four pounds for it, let alone sixty pounds. Come on, man. Sort your lives out, bro. So it says, um, so it wasn't clear to everyone how Cyberpunk might run on the PS4 and Xbox One. External tests, however, showed uh, clear performance issues. And that's what I'm trying to say, man. Like the apology video, literally, all that apology video said to me, it's a PC game. The console, it's a bit of a mess. We did, we did abandon it. Sorry about that. <sighs> you know how I feel about that. And then the um, game director, Adam Badowski, yeah, um, actually today, yeah, the 17th of, the, of January 2021, yeah, he put a reply to Jason Stryer's um, expose. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, when the Jason Stryer did this interview, before he was about to put it out, because he did give them a date that he was going to pull it out, funnily enough, yeah, it was round about the same time that they did that apology video. Mm. They He did say that CD Projekt declined to comment on the process provided in the interviews for the story and it's only after the interviews come out that this Adam Badowski has come out with just basically bullshit flying out of his mouth you know nothing worth of note is coming out of his mouth that he said he basically said that the um, the demo wasn't fake it was pretty much the full game is close to what that game uh, the demo was or what was in that scene no it wasn't you look at that game you had contextual kills in that demo you had the um they showed the the whole thing with like flying cars and car ambushes. Like sometimes you'd be driving them randomly, you just get like a car ambush and stuff like that. You know, you had the flathead robot that looked bloody cool. You know, certain aspects of that trailer, graphics looked better. In sorry, in that demo, graphics looked better. Yeah, in certain aspects. So it was a little bit, yeah, a little bit all over the place. What was it? There was like this thing with um, Khrushchev or whichever, yeah, which gives you the ability to like slow down time or move down time or stuff like that, yeah. There is something like that in CD Projekt in this um, Cyberpunk, but it's not like that. Yeah, there's a thing where it kind of goes into like some kind of 
kind of like like a CR CRT kind of like television um, digital kind of like aspect, which is pretty cool actually. Where it slows down, where if you have like the um, the mod on and then you dodge, it slows down a little bit. But that I think it's Kroshnikov or something like that. Yeah, I, maybe I'm not saying it right. Yeah, but you'll see the demo where it slows down. You take a bit of it, go. And then it powers you up and then you can like slow down times like drugs or something like that, yeah? And that looked really cool. Where is that kind of stuff in the game? Like that in particular. Where is that? Yeah? So I don't want to hear nothing, man. And then there's that whole thing. What was it? Um, trauma team. Yeah? Where, where's this trauma team membership? Where's the flying cars? Where is it? All this story that you promised. But oh yeah, 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 that wasn't the game. But you put it in sped up bits, or it was like a kind of like sped up montage, yeah, which is like basically minutes, yeah, of content or hours of content cut. Oh yeah, because people don't want to sit through story. People are not going to watch that. No, 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 no. That's not the reason people love Witcher Three, isn't it? People don't love Witcher Three because of the story and the cutscenes and the characters. People love of um, Witcher 3 because of the content, the, the, the gameplay. That's it. Because the gameplay in um, Witcher 3 was godlike. Incredible gameplay. Much better than the story. I'm being sarcastic, by the way, because the combat, if you play Witcher 3, is absolute garbage. It's complete shit. Complete shit. But the game was so good... In terms of the story and just the feeling of the world and the characters that you could overlook the absolute piss that was the gameplay system. So yeah, man, that's all I really want to talk about with this man, you know, this whole interview because it just, it sickened me, dude. I didn't want to do this, but it made me do it. And the thing that really wound me up when I saw that the E3 demo, it was fake. That's shocking to me. I'm so I'm flabbergasted by that. And then the fact that the game in, in 2000, until 2016, the whole game was going to be in third person. And they changed it to first person. And the only reason that I abandoned that whole argument was because the developers were coming out saying the whole game is meant to be in first person for the interactive um, intuitive, dynamic experience. Don't worry, what you're going to see is going to absolutely blow your mind. Yeah? I see nothing of that. This whole interactive, blow your mind aspect of the game, don't see it. And when they were say, um, saying that kind of stuff, they were doing it with cutscenes of a woman sitting down yeah, with um, half her face removed and doing like technical adjustments to her robotics and stuff like that. So I was thinking maybe stuff like that is going to be so in depth, man, where the customization, like when you change something with like your eye sockets or your sensors or your hearing, you actually do it in real time in first person where you're looking in the mirror and you're seeing yourself making the adjustments. Yeah, because they were making it sound like it was going to be like that. And that's the only reason I allowed it. I allowed the argument for third person because of the grandeur, yeah, of their selling the game of what it was going to be. Game's not in, the game's not in VR. There's no VR in this game. There's no 3D in this game. There's nothing that pops out of the screen. It just bloody amazes me in terms of interactive, whoa, mind-bending stuff. There ain't nothing like that. You don't even come close to it in that game. Unbelievable. You know, because I've got things in my head like PT or Resident Evil 7 and those kind of experiences. And they could do like incredible interactive experiences that just mind blow you and bend your mind and just shock you and exhaust you from just sheer emotion. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, if Cyberpunk are trying to say, uh, these guys are masters of storytelling. And if they're saying they're going to do something mind-blowing, that this is the reason we have to do it in first person, guys. 
trust us. This is the vision that we've had from the beginning. This game must be in first person. The game was meant to be in third person, bro. Meant to be in third person. They just changed it because the director, the, the first director left and then Adam Badowski changed and he wants to overhaul stuff. Oh, man. From pillar to post, this is so disappointing. It's shocking. Absolutely disappointing and shocking, bro. It's just a, a dumpster fire that just keeps on getting bigger and bigger. And I was actually going to do a video. I think it was about two days ago. But the reason I didn't is because after I saw this intent, I was going to do a video for the apology video. And I said, no, something else is going to happen. Then the Jason Schreier um, expose came out. And then I was going to do it yesterday. But I thought, let me hold on. Because I know CD Projekt Red is going to reply. And they did reply with their nothing. Basically not addressing anything. They didn't, they didn't address the way they treated people. They didn't address the how fake the thing was. They didn't fake how there were certain elements of the system. That were not even done during that, that trailer. Coding. There were certain things they showed in that demo. That hadn't even been coded yet. Something like the police system was put in last second. The fact that they prioritised marketing, which is very clear, yeah, because they sold that game. They sold the game well. They sold us a hope and a dream, and that was all they sold. And we didn't even get that, but they sold us the hope and the dream, yeah? Didn't address any of that kind of stuff, yeah? Didn't address, you know, you lied. The game is not, it's not, it's not a special game. It's a game. I've played hundreds, thousands at this point. It's a game. If you were to, if I was to say my top 100 games, that would not be in my top 100 of all time. Nowhere near my top 100 of all time. Yet Witcher is in my top five games of all time. Come on, man. I'm done, bro. I'm done. So Warriors, I'm um, sorry, I know that this, you know, video, almost an hour, yeah, but I want to go in, bro, I want to go in, and you know, if I do a video, I'm going in, I ain't messing about, we go in hard body, right, this is just how we do things, the Warriors, so yeah, I want to say thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, I am going to be going in more, doing more videos, doing more gameplay stuff. Yeah, um, so please, Warriors, stick with me. We're in there. We're doing our best. So I'll say take care, stay blessed, stay safe. And I'll catch you guys very, very soon. Laters.